Good morning and Jai Masi and uh, Namaste to all. Uh, we just want to welcome each one of you who are uh, virtually attending this uh, a Pattern English service. We just want to welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord. Uh, let's join together in our prayer as we commit ourselves uh, in this worship uh, of this morning. Uh, in this very fine morning, we just want to welcome each one of you. Let's uh, open our heart, open our soul, open our mind, and let's worship our Lord Jesus uh, together uh, in spirit and uh, in his presence so that we will be connected in his presence. Uh, let's uh, pray and let's commit uh, our time uh, in, um, in, in worship. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to commit our time uh, this morning that you had given to us, this fine morning as we come together to worship in your name, Lord. We just want to commit ourselves, our service, our preacher, our worshiper uh, this morning. As we to, uh, come together, Lord, we just want to have this one spirit, one heart to worship you. We know that uh, you are our savior, Lord. You had given us your very begotten son uh, in our a replacement for our sin, Lord. We just want to give thanks for your Savior grace and your agape prem, Lord. I just want to glorify your name as we come together to worship you, to glorify your name. Uh, thank you, our Father, for your love and your grace and your mercy for us. Uh, we just want to commit our speaker for today and our uh, worship leader for today as we worship together. Let's bless uh, uh, them so that we'll be blessed through them, Lord. We just want to uh, glorify uh, your name. And as we come together, uh, though we are sick, we are tired, but again, we are not worried and we are not uh, uh, heavy laden because you are here for us who had uh, showed your mercy through Jesus, our savior. Thank you, our Father, for this day, this morning that you had given to us and this heart to worship you. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you. And let's worship together with uh, Sujit as he leads us in the worship songs. Good morning, everyone. What a mighty God we serve. Let us worship our God who is worthy to be praised. Um, Binodai, could we have a PowerPoint on? So that I would like to read from Jeremiah 9, 24, here it says, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love justice and righteousness in the earth for in these things i delight declares the lord amen lord jesus we come before you this morning as we are and we would like to welcome you in our midst father the god who created all things with the god who was and is and is to come. And you alone are God who is worthy to be praised. So we welcome you Holy Spirit as we worship, as we sing, as we praise unto your name. Let you be glorified. Open our eyes so that we could see, so that we could feel your presence in our midst, so that we could worship you, so that we could glorify you and worship in truth and in gladness Jesus come and have your way in us open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the 
eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you See you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing I want to see you, Lord, I want to see you, won't you open our eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. your power and love as we say holy, holy, holy holy, holy, holy holy, holy, holy holy, holy, holy I want to see Holy, 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 I want to see you. Yes, Lord, you are holy and you are just. There is no one like you. the name but the name of the Jesus no other name but the name of Jesus is worthy of glory and worthy of honor and worthy of power and all praise all glory belongs to our God Jesus, we worship you. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of the Lord. No other name but the name of Jesus is worthy of Pray.
once exalted Father of all the earth Yes, Lord, His name is high of all the heaven Lord, His name is exalted you have poured upon us through Jesus Christ. Here in Psalm 32 it reads like this, happy is whose transgression is taken away, whose sin is covered. Happy is a person to whom Yahweh does not impute iniquity. And in those and in whose spirit there is not deceit. When I kept silent, my bones were worn out due to my groaning all the day. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vigor was changed in the dry heat of summer. I made known my sin to you and my iniquity I did not cover. I said, I will confess concerning my transgression to Yahweh, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you at the time for finding you. Surely, at the flood of many waters, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. From trouble, you preserve me. With cries of deliverance, you surround me. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, saving me. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you, Lord. What can I give to you? What can I offer to the King for all the love you shown? For all your mercy. I called your name, you heard my cry out of the grave and into life. My heart is yours, my soul is free. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, saving me. Thank you, God, thank you. The rock of salvation, 
vapor but you are eternal you are everlasting god from everlasting to everlasting you are god and there is none like you you created everything here on earth and in all this universe you are the creator you're the sustainer what a mighty god we serve thank you jesus for saving us though we are like a vapor you loved us so much that you sent your begotten son to die for our sin and we are delivered because of the sacrifice that Jesus that you did on the cross that you gave your life on the cross and now we are free and we are saved and we are free indeed holy holy lord god almighty we worship you this morning for your amazing love we are a moment you are forever lord of the ages god before time we are a vapor you are eternal love everlasting reigning on high a holy holy lord god almighty Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Highest praises, honor and glory Be unto your name Be unto your name 
for leading us in such a wonderful worship. Um, obviously, we all are blessed with uh, the worship, the song, the hymns that we sang this morning. Um, once again, I just want to welcome each one of you in our Queen in a Pattern English Worship Service. Um, welcome in this fine, uh, warm morning. Um, obviously, we, some of us are sick. We are coughing, we are sneezing because of this uh, the change of the weather that is happening now. Uh, but again, uh, we are warm-hearted when we are worshiping the Lord. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, with further delay, let's um, move toward our missionary of the month. Uh, our missionary of the month uh, is Mr. Bikram Tamang, Kwenena Simpan Church. Uh, his home church is Kwenena Patan Church. His mission field is Sautara, uh, Gairigao. His uh, church name is Koenena St. Paul Church. He's missionary since 2014. Uh, he's, he has 45 members. Uh, and out of that, 10 are baptized and 35 are still um, in the process. He has a wife and a children. And his prayer requests are... Okay, yeah, that, that's him. Uh, I think... Uh, yeah... His son is almost like all grown up. So it's quite confusing for some of us. But again, that is our missionary. And his prayer request is uh, for the effective and blessed uh, ministry in his area and church and uh, for the evangelism and follow work that is being done in the flood victim camp. And they are also planning to plant a, a fellowship, uh, a small group um, that they can meet up in this uh, particular camp for the flood victims. And also for the financial need for his children and his school, uh, for their school and college studies, and for the cancer treatment of his father and all the expenses that requires uh, with it. So let's uh, remember um, Mr. Bikram Tama in our prayer. Let's pray. Uh, thank you, our Father, for um, our missionary, Mr. Bikram Tama, uh, as he is serving in Kornen and St. Paul Church in uh, Chautara, Gaigigao. We just want to uplift him and uh, his family and all the ministry that he's doing um, as he ministers to you. We just want to pray that you also look after him and his needs. 
uh, we just want to pray for his um, ministry that he is uh, doing in that particular area and also the ministry that he is doing for the flood victims um, in that particular area uh, which happened recently uh, we just want to pray for he, him and his uh, team as they are putting their effort uh, to reach out uh, the people that are um, shattered because of the weather that happened, natural disaster that happened in the past few months. So we just want to uh, pray that you will comfort them with uh, the word of God. And as uh, Mr. Bikram Tamang and his team uh, leads in uh, sharing gospel to them, uh, be, bless them and uh, help them and give them the guidance and knowledge that they require to minister that people um, in that particular area and the camp. Uh, we also want to pray for uh, his financial needs that he uh, is praying for as uh, his um, son and daughter are studying. Uh, they just want uh, uh, some of the help in tuition fees and also for the um, treatment procedure of his father who has a neck cancer. Uh, we want to pray for your comfort and your healing upon his father and help them um, at this time of the pandemic uh, they are going through some of the financial crisis. We just want to uplift uh, him um, that you are the one who provides and you are the one who guides uh, for the <clears throat> help and support that they require, Lord. We just want to uplift uh, him and his ministry and his family and all the things that they are in need, uh, that you will the one who will comfort him and you are the one who will uh, bless them with uh, their needs also, Lord. Thank you, Father. We just want to uplift him once again. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen. Uh, once again, we want to uh, uh, ask and request uh, each one of us uh, who are present here that uh, we let's promote our English worship service uh, among our friends and the families in our church uh, so that many people will be blessed with this uh, English worship service as well. Um, let's uh, uh, move forward uh, in collecting the offering uh, as we are collecting offering and um, later when we, we have time we can go to Patent Church and we can submit our offering uh, in, um, in the account section of our Koinene Patent Church but uh, during that time let's collect our offering in our own respective places and uh, later we can submit it uh, in the Koinene Patent Church I'll give this time to Sujit once again that he will uh, uh, sing a song for us as while we are collecting the offering. Jesus 
Okay, um, let's pray for the collected offering and uh, for the, our speaker today. Our speaker today is our very own uh, senior pastor, Dr. Mangal Man Maharajan. Um, I'll uh, request Brother Ramesh to pray for the collected offering and for our speaker today. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we want to thank you for this morning, God, that you have given to us and you have, uh, you have helped us, Lord Jesus, to gather together to praise your name and to worship your name. And you are our friend and you are our father, God. And we worship you and we glorify your name, God, for who you are and what you have done in our life, Lord Jesus. And today, as we gather uh, virtually also, we pray that God, the collected offering, from our heart and as we go to the church during the week, we pray that God through this offering, uh, you will bless it Lord Jesus for your uh, extension of the kingdom Lord Jesus. And we also pray that God this offering will be used uh, in the church wisely Lord. And for that we pray that God you will continue to shower your wisdom and your guidance through your Holy Spirit to your uh, to your children, Lord Jesus, the leaders of the church and who are responsible to it, Lord. We pray that, God, you will, uh, be, you will be with them and guide them, Lord. And we pray for your blessings over the one who has given the uh, offering, Lord. We pray that, God, you will continue to bless in their income and in their work, O oh Lord Jesus. And during this pandemic, we know that it's not easy, but we trust in you and we rely on you because you are our Jehovah Jireh who provides, Lord Jesus. And we know that, God, uh, till today we are uh, fine and we are safe just because of you, God, and we are not suffering in hunger or in poverty, God, because you are there for us, Lord Jesus. So we pray that, God, you will uh, take this offering for the extension of your kingdom and the one who are not able to give also. We pray that in the coming days you will uh, bless them, Lord Jesus, to earn also, God. And we pray that, God, you will continue to be with each one of us. And today our uh, senior pastor, your son, Lord Jesus, he is going to deliver your message through the book of Acts, Lord Jesus. And we have been learning about the gospel, the disciples, Lord Jesus. And we know that, Lord, this gospel is good news for us, Lord. And we pray that, God, as we listen to your words, we pray that you will give us attentive ears and attentive hearts and attentive mind, Lord Jesus. We will not just be listening, but we will be applying your words into our own life, God, every day. And may your word be the application of our daily life, Lord. And for that, uh, we pray that, God, you will continue to anoint our senior pastor to deliver your ma message, God, and you will bless his preparation also, God. And today, as we listen, we pray that, God, you will unite us in Jesus Christ, in your spirit, Lord. We are one, God, and we pray that, God, we will be learning and we will be blessed and we will not go empty-handed, God, but we will be going with the spirit filled, Lord Jesus, so that we can be a blessing for others to the world, Lord Jesus. And thank you, God, that we can have this fellowship every Sunday to be to encourage one another, to be uplifted, God, so that we can go on during the throughout the week, Lord Jesus, during this pandemic. So we pray again for your blessings and for your anointing uh, to your son, God, and our senior pastor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Brother Ramesh, for leading us in prayer. And now I'll just give this time, the rest of the time, to our senior pastor, Dr. Mangal Man Mahajan. Thank you. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, we are going to the book of Acts. Today we are on chapter 13. Chapter 13, uh, verses 4 through 12. Book of Acts, chapter 13, verses 4 through 
12. Uh, I would like to read once for all, and you can see in your Bible, look at your Bible. I'm reading from NIV Bible, Acts chapter 13, verses 4 through 12. It reads like this. Title given here is on Cyprus. The two of them <clears throat> sent on their way by the Holy Spirit went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimas and said, you are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right or righteousness. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop pervert, perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind, and for a time you will be unable to see the light of the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. Amen. Amen. As we have been looking through this book of Acts, at chapter 13, we will see from verse 1 to 3, there are people, most leading leaders were worshiping the Lord in Antioch church. And that time, the Holy Spirit spoke to them and said to those people, set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. We don't know how they heard the voice and the audible voice or in their hearts, they were convinced but anyway, they should have heard that one because everyone was convinced and they obeyed that one. So such people obeyed the Holy Spirit and sent them off after they had fasted and prayed and just responded immediately. So here, now we see in verse four, two of them now, the Paul and Barnabas or Saul and Barnabas were sent on their way by the Holy Spirit. It says here, by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was the one who was sending them. So they went down to Seleucia. So we should notice from here that Paul and Barnabas, so they went on preaching the gospel in the Cyprus island. So I've given title here is that Paul and Barnabas went on preaching the gospel in the Cyprus island. Now today God has called you and me in a different way and different places wherever he has that plan and purpose to send us to do the ministry so we should be responding him immediately and we should be really obeying him what he's going to do or what what he was saying to us so one thing we should notice from here is that how they responded the holy spirit now how they heard a voice so one thing we we notice from verse one to three in chapter 13 while they were worshiping the Lord and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were really fasting and praying. In those days, those times, God speaks to people. If we are devoted, we are really dedicated, we are really committed, our heart is really to worship him, honor him. We want to know his will. 
we want to know his desire, we want to know his purpose, then God will speak to us. If we don't, no, if we don't do those things or we don't spend time in worship and prayer and fasting and that one, then God will not really speak to us because we are not really intent to listen to him. While they were worshiping, as we worship him, we draw closer, near to him, and we dedicate our life, and really we want to honor and worship him, then God speaks to us. So we should be really a sensitive in that one. No? We should be very sensitive how God is speaking to us. We may not have to the audible voice. Sometimes audible voice, yes, he speaks to us. Or sometimes it may not be, but God will be speaking through our friends, our relatives, our neighbors, maybe even non-Christians. They will be speaking something. No? God is speaking through them to us. We should be very sensitive what Holy Spirit is saying to us. How are we responding his calling. For example, how to respond or how to really hear his voice, how to uh, sense his calling or his saying to us. One example I heard from my friend, one of my friend, friends, and he said he wanted to go to one village, but he doesn't know what to do, whether he shall go or not. The situation was not good but he should go. He wanted to go. That night he could not sleep. But that night, then, while he was asking God, praying to God, what shall I do, Lord? Then, on the road, on the road, two husband and wife was fighting. Two husband and wife were fighting or quarreling each other and saying, the husband was saying to his wife, if you go today, you don't come again. You just go away. Don't come back again. Never come back again. Then the wife said, if you say so, I don't go. Because of their quarreling, husband and wife, that Christian, my friend, who understood and said, Lord, you are representing a husband and I am representing wife. If you say so, Lord, I will not go. So from there also, he got that you know, response or he got the answer of his prayer. So he said, Lord, okay, you are my Lord. You are my master. You are my husband and I'm your servant. I'm your wife. So if you say so, I will not go. So he took him that way and he didn't go there. And he was saved by from all kinds of troubles there in the village. If you go there, if he went there, then he will be in, you know, he would be, have been trouble there. So we should be sensitive uh, to his response. Sometimes God speaks through situation. Sometimes God speaks through people. Sometimes God speaks through our parents, maybe relatives and friends. So we should be very sensitive what he is saying to us. If we are closer to him, if we are worshiping him, if, if we are really willing to know his desire and purpose, then he will be really showing us, he will be speaking to us. One man, Rajkumar from India also, while he was teaching in Haggai, and he was also sharing that how to respond and how to know his desire and his, how to hear his voice. How can we be sensitive? sensitive to that one. And he was saying that one day he was on the flight and God spoke to him and said, okay, you say something to the, this uh, aeroplane uh, hostess. No? You speak to her, but how could I speak, Lord? I cannot speak. How can I do that? But Lord says continually to him, you speak to her. He, she has a problem. He could not do that. He was asking, please, Lord, sorry, forgive me. I cannot do that. But continuously, the spirit was speaking to him, says that you speak to her. 
it's almost landing time. He could not do that, so he went to the toilet and wrote in a small paper and saying that, Lord is speaking to me, sister, you have a problem, and you, you just uh, talk with Jesus. You just read the Bible. That's what uh, God is showing to me. So he could not talk with her, but he gave that small paper to her uh, before landing, just before landing. You know? Then she kept that paper, and uh, maybe she went back and sat there, landing time also, and she just read that one. And she was crying. She was crying. And he said, while he was just going out of the plane, and she said, how do you know that I have a problem? And he said, Rajkumar said, the Lord is speaking to me. The Lord showed me. And he was saying to me, say something to you. Write something to you. So I just wrote it. So she had a great problem. And then he got, as she got that solution. So just, he told her, you just read the Bible and Jesus is the answer for you. And she cried and then she said, I will do so. So we should be sensitive what God is speaking to us. So time to time, we may not be really uh, sensitive to his voice in hearing his voice. But anyway, if we are close to him, if we are always you know, willing to hear his voice, if we are following his desire, will, then he will be showing us. So these Paul and Barnabas were also sent by the Holy Spirit and they immediately obeyed. They obeyed the Holy Spirit and also a church was obedient. And church people fasted and prayed and sent them and laying hands upon them. And they took the responsibility to pray for them and also uh, support them also, morally, financially, and in spiritually also. And they'll pray for them. So we as a church, we as a church member also, whenever we send someone, when Holy Spirit is speaking to us, okay, set apart these people, send them to somewhere for my work, to evangelize, to do the ministry, and we as a church people also really pray for them and support them physically, financially, and spiritually. We need to do that, you know? As a church confirm their calling and really commission them and also send them forth. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit working through the local church. Today also, uh, wait a minute, battery is low, I don't know what happened. Okay, yeah. Sorry for that <laughs> interruption. So here, as I'm saying that uh, how sensitive we are and we church, as a church family also need to be responsible for sending the people we as a church members also, as God is sending us somewhere else, if we hear the voice, if we are, you know, uh, conformed, then church also need to, church also need to see that one. So here, that it is likely here, we see they really responded, God spoke to them all, and they were all responding what Holy Spirit was saying to them and talking to them. The second thing what we see from here is that they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. So it's a synagogues. That means they went to that Cyprus where most of the Jewish people were there. And Jewish people were residing there. Cyprus, we know, if we read uh, chapter 4 also, 
the Bardivas homeland or home country or hometown. So Bardivas, Bardivas was from there. That's why they went first there. The Holy Spirit himself led them to go first there in Cyprus. So they went there. We see here uh, from verse 4 to 5 when we read there, the two of them sent on their way by the Holy Spirit went down to Seleucia, that's a port, and uh, sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. So they went to Cyprus, that is a hometown of Barnabas. So when we see uh, these people are going to Cyprus because Cyprus is homeland or hometown. So it was easier for them, comfortable for them to travel there and see people there. Barnabas, Barnabas was the leader at that time and he took there. So they went on preaching in the synagogue, you know, proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. They were already called, actually, we know, especially the Saul was called already for the Gentile people. And uh, he was specially, specially called for the Gentile uh, evangelism, and he was there. But anyway, now again, these two people were Jewish people, Barnabas and uh, Saul was a Jewish people. So they went to the synagogues before there, before reaching other places. They went on preaching to synagogues, why? God has given them that priority, no? Everywhere we notice always saying that I should, I should save these people. I should proclaim the good news to them first. So Paul and Barnabas were Jews, so they had that mind. They had there in mind that they should give a priority to the Jewish people. And also one thing we noticed there that even the Gentile people who were circumcised and they were attending the Jewish Synagogues, it, it was a time, it was a place for them to hear the gospel because it is easy for them to understand. In the Old Testament, we will notice now all the, all the uh, promises or uh, prophecies were prophesied there about the coming of the Messiah. So it's easy for them to share the gospel there. Anyway, these Jewish people we're convincing the Jewish people there that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the savior. So now they went on saying, when they arrived Salamis, they went on proclaiming good word, good news, proclaim the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. So they went preaching. What happened? It is not noticed here. It is not recorded here. But anyway, we can believe the Lord was working through them. They must have formed a group there. Many of them have received Christ. Many of them responded to Paul's preaching, the Barnabas preaching there. Even the Gentiles might have come to know him. So for the Gentiles who were there, uh, they understand. Gentiles also, they understand you now what was happening there and how Jesus came as a Messiah so it was easier for them to understand because they were already acquainted with the Old Testament because they were attending the synagogues. They understood about the Old Testament prophecies and the promise given to them that Messiah is coming. So they must have understood it. They must have received Jesus Christ and they have formed a group there. They must have done that one. So we notice here. So here, one mark is there. They have taken John Mark was with them as their a helper. John Mark was there. Uh, John Mark was as an assistant helping them. And uh, we know the, this uh, John Mark uh, must have been led by uh, Peter. And he was following Peter. Peter must have led him there. And it is said that uh, he was uh, a niece or nephew, a nephew of uh, Barnabas, and he will be uh, leading them, and also he'll be helping them, 
and he'll be with them all the time. But later on, we know he came back, and that's why Paul was angry uh, with uh, Mark, John Mark. So we notice here, they went on preaching. Uh, we, as uh, Christians, wherever God sends us, wherever Holy Spirit leads us, we need to go and we need to really preach on, preach on, sharing the gospel everywhere, everywhere, wherever God sends us. So second thing uh, we see from verse 6, second, third or second thing we can see from verse 6 to 12, actually. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. So they came to Paphos. And they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar Jesus. Named Bar Jesus. Here they met. They met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul or Roman governor and Sergius Paulus. We see here the Jewish sorcerer is unusual. Jewish people to become a sorcerer or a magician, as you notice in Leviticus chapter 19 also, that Jewish people should not practice those things. God will curse them. God will punish them. But we don't know why this Jewish sorcerer was there. The Jewish people, false prophet, and he's pretending that he's a, he has inspiration from God. And he can do all things. And magician, he's a magician. Actually, he should not have done that one, but he's doing that one. We don't know why, but anyway, he was thinking of himself. He's a popular, he's a famous man. He was known as a bar Jesus, a son of Jesus, actually. It means the son of Jesus, but he's not working as son of Jesus. But that's a bar Jesus, those are uh, common names for them. Anyway, the Jewish people also put those names there. But here, the sorcerer, the false prophet named the Bar Jesus, who was attendant of the proconsul, that's a Roman governor. He was helping him, counseling him, and he was advancing him, and he was there. And Roman governor was also very happy because he's an advisor, he's a magician, he knows, and he inspires, and he guides, and he says, okay, this day is good for you. That day is good for, you no? Know? In previous days, the king had that kind of, uh, uh, one kind of uh, people were there, you know? They will say, king, majesty, it's not good for you to travel this day. And it will be good for other day. In that way, his sorcerer, this Jewish sorcerer also was helping that man. And he was very famous. And he can do magics also. And he was doing that when he was prophesying also. That he's saying that he's pretending God is speaking through him. But actually it was not so. It was false. So here, this uh, Sergius Paulus, who was one way to say, it says he was a very wise man, intelligent man. And he was interested to hear the gospel. He must have heard about the preaching of Barnabas and Paul in the Paphos. So when he heard that one, they have done great miracles and the teaching is very good and really uh, influential. And he wants to know about that one. So he called, the Sergius Paulus called those Barnabas and Paul. It's a soul. It says here, because he wanted to hear the word of God in verse seven. He wanted to hear the word of God, but Elimas, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means. The Elimas, the Greek word for the sorcerer, they were, he was called as a sorcerer. People know him as Elimas. So Elimas, the sorcerer, for that is what his name was, opposed them and tried to turn 
the proconsul from the Fed, the Roman governor, Roman governor, the Sergius Paulus, to turn from his faith. That's why when we notice wherever Lord works, wherever God does the work, there will be an opposition. From where? Mainly from our own people, mainly from our own family members, mainly from our own relatives and neighbors. So we notice that one. Wherever God works, then Satan is there. Satan will be working there also. So we should notice that one. So oppose them, that Elimas oppose Paul and Barnabas and try to turn the proconsul from the faith. Actually, proconsul, the Roman governor, this uh, name Sergius Paulus, wanted to know Jesus. And he was convinced, Holy Spirit was convincing him that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And he was convinced and he was willing to accept and he is willing to follow Jesus Christ. And it says here that Elimas opposed him. And Elimas is the one who tried to turn the personal from the faith, the Roman governor from the faith. Then Saul was angry. It says in verse 9, the soul was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimas and said, Time to time, in this kind of situation, we also need to have that boldness to really rebuke the evil spirit. Here Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimas and said, You are a child of devil and an enemy of everything that is right or that is righteousness. Righteous thing. He is enemy of everything that is righteous, good things. He is an enemy. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Full of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? He was perverting the right ways. And he was, you know, doing all bad things. And he wants to show people that he is a great man. He's a man of God. He's a prophet. He's a magician. And there, if this Sergius Paulus proconsul or Roman governor turns to faith or goes to believe in Jesus Christ, if he becomes Christian, then his work will be finished. He will be out of that job. So he wanted to really keep his job there and he wanted to be a counselor, advisor for this uh, Sergius Paulus. That's why he is opposing Paul and Barnabas. So Paul was angry. Saul was really angry with him and filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimus and said, you are a child of devil. You know, it's a very strong word, harsh word for him. In front of everyone, Paul rebuked him and said, you are a child of devil and enemy of everything that is righteousness. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Then one way to say here, it's course is there. Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind. And for a time, you'll be unable to see the light of the sun. You'll be blind. It's not just speaking, but here, that man really became blind. He became blind. He could not see. Immediately, mists and the darkness came over him. And he groped about seeking someone to lead him, lead him by the land, by the hand. So immediately the things happened. They saw the power of God. They also noticed that Paul and Barnabas was a 
men of God. They have all the authority over evil spirits and devils, all these false things. They were men of God. They had the power. God has given them that authority. Many of the times we also need to rebuke those people who are opposing and who are really trickery deceiving people and who are all against all kinds of deceit and trickery and also uh, these people like any of everything that is righteousness, the right things. We need to pray and we need to think of things and we should be led by the Holy Spirit when to say, what to say. But here, Paul was filled with, filled with the Holy Spirit and rebuked him in front of all of them and he said, you are a child of David. Child of David is a harsh word. It's a very strong word for him. And not only that, then he said, Lord's hand is upon you. You will be blind for some time. God's grace was there for him for, for some time only. Not forever, but he was blind for some time. It says for some time. It says here, and for time, for a time, you will be unable to see the light of the sun. You will be blind for some time. Really, that man could not see now anyway. And it says here, he groped about and seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Please help me. And he was searching for someone to hold someone. Now he cannot see at all. He really became immediately blind. So people saw that. He also noticed that. And he really did wrong thing and he was in that sin. He should leave that sin. He should forsake that sin. And people saw that. And here it says, when the proconsul or Roman governor saw what had happened, he believed for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. We see here the great significance in the progression of this gospel to the Gentiles also. Now, here, from Papus, as they went to Salamis, they were proclaiming the word of God to the Jewish synagogues. Now they went to the Papus, and they traveled whole island. It says that they traveled whole island. Now, this is a progression here to reach the gospel to the Gentiles. And now here, the Roman governor, Sergius Paulus, and he was chosen, he believed. Since he is a governor, like Pontius Pilate and some others flag, uh, Philips, and those people are there, and Roman emperor uh, who was the one uh, who was appointing them. And here, this man was a great man, great influential man. And when he became a Christian, then he could influence all the people around him, wherever, whoever under him, and since he's a great man, you know, when he received Christ, when he believed Christ, then many people really believe. In the society also, when we reach a rich man, when we reach a businessman, when we reach a great influential man, or we can say artists, heroes and heroines and uh, uh, political leaders, when we reach them, when they receive Christ, like a village uh, leaders, you know, when they receive, like mayors, when they receive Christ, and many of their colleagues, many of his staff will also believe. That was not their target anyway, you know, but we should target as Paul was targeting all the influential people in the cities and reaching those people. But anyway, God himself allowed this Sergius Paulus to hear and God gave him, you know, God gave him that mind and heart and desire to hear the word of God from Barnabas and Paul. And he was a great man. He wanted to know more about Jesus. Who is Jesus? He wants to know more new things. But anyway, God chose him and God used him for the future ministry also. So he believed for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. We preach the gospel, we share the gospel, but Holy Spirit is the one who is convincing people and convicting their sins also. 
But anyway, as I said, if we hear his voice, if we could sense his voice, if we can feel you know, what he was saying, then we should obey, we should go, and we should do the ministry. If we are called by the Lord, then we should really uh, also let people, the church people know it, and church people also should really confirm it, and they should also support us, they should also pray for us, they should also financially help us. If we are going somewhere else, if we are missionary to somewhere else, if God, if God is calling you and me to go somewhere and do the ministry, then we should inform the church and church should be also convinced in that one, confirm in that one. Then they can also pray and uh, send, you know, they can help financially and that one. So here, as I said, the circus Paulus was a Chosen people, chosen man. God himself chose him. God himself gave him that desire to hear the word of God, the gospel. Then he became Christian. He received Christ. One thing, he was confirmed that when Paul spoke and when Paul rebuked his own counselor, his own advisor, his own friend, helper, you know, that uh, his name is Bar Jesus, and also another name was uh, given here is Elimas. When he heard that, it was maybe fearful for them. You know? He should not have spoken in that way. He should not have said that one. But Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, and said, You, child of devil, you'll be blind for some time. When he spoke that, it happened, and he saw it. Paul has that power. And Paul has that authority. God has given him that one. So he believed. He believed Jesus Christ. And that man became the most influential people in that area. So we noticed this one. So the result is that the proconsul or the Roman governor believed Jesus Christ. We see here only one person, but he has influenced a lot. And he really reached out many people. It's not mentioned here, but if we can really see, we can really notice on that one. So that man, Malius, the uh, bar Jesus in Elimas was humbled. He was humbled and he could also believe Jesus. I have done wrong. I have done wrong so many things. Now I believe, forgive me. It's not mentioned here, but anyway, he was also chosen. And he noticed that God has power. God struck him, struck him. Now he's blind. Later on, for some time only, God gave him a grace and he could see later again. So by that power, he also believed Jesus Christ. And also this Roman governor also believed Jesus Christ, Sargus Paul. So that's how really God works. We just need to obey wherever he sent us. We should go. We should just obey. And we should not be really, no, hesitating and why, how can I know um, those things? We should not pretend. We should not have that excuse, but we should go. No, we should go. We should go. So, as I said today, we need to obey. We need to be sensitive to hear his voice. And God will use us in a mighty way for his glory. Okay, I'll put this much this time. May God bless us all. Thank you. God bless you. Hmm. Thank you so much, Pastor Ba, for sharing us from the word of God. Um, now, uh, so we have come to the end of our, our service. Uh, so now I would like to uh, again uh, ask Pastor Ba to pray and conclude and also uh, give us the benediction and then we'll go to um, the sermon discussion right after the, the benediction okay let's pray <clears throat> our gracious heavenly father we thank you we praise you we worship you because you are our god you are our savior you mm -hmm. speak even today to us from different ways lord 
from different peoples for different ways. Lord, we thank you for that. Help us to really understand. Help us to hear your voice. Lord, help us to obey. Help us to go wherever you sent us. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for the reminding us that you can speak to us. You can do the miracle. You can have that power. You can do. As you have given a power to Paul and Barnabas when he spoke, that man became blind. In the same way, you have given us that power and authority. Whatever we speak, it happens there. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you so much. Help us to really obey, dedicate our life, commit our life to you, and worship you all the time, and help us to hear your voice all the time. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's have a benediction also. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Father God, peace and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore. Amen. Amen.